Today on the Topic Show, Bud Light Dak tweet gets only 90 likes, not even the Dallas Cowboys can help save Bud Light. Vivek on Elizabeth Warren's net worth goes viral. Ron DeSantis' inner monologue parody goes viral as well. Anderson Bush National Lager Day tweet is ratioed as usual. Macy's is considering a $5.8 billion buyout. BlackBerry names a new CEO. And Doritos to launch a nacho cheese flavored vodka. All of that much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. That's the joke you see. If you're a business owner or IT leader, you reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of December, so if you click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Macy's considering a $5.8 billion buyout. Now, this comes to us thanks to the OG news, the ones that makes me always feel a little more nostalgia. Good old Yahoo Finance, which was the OG search engine back in the day. Now, Macy's, they've they've actually been doing better than I thought. If you look at their stock long-term rise, they've crit- probably the most well-known retailers in the United States. I think most everyone knows Macy's Day's Parade. They've been an iconic in cinema, filmography, and, well, truth be told, I think I haven't shopped there since 1990. Three or four, or something like that, years ago. Needless to say, as you know, if you've tuned into the show before, I like to buy one suit and make it last forever and just suit up as the occasion calls for it. Now, Macy's, look at their stock. It's seventeen dollars and thirty cents per share. Five-year trend. They're not. They haven't crashed, but it's not great. Their five-year trend is down negative thirty-seven point one four percent. In the past one-year trend is down fourteen percent. Year to date, they're down negative. 10.78%. Now, interestingly enough, the past six months, their stock is actually up by 16.97%. So that is quite a big dip. Past month, they're up positive 58.14%. Jeez Louise, this is why I always say hindsight is always 2020, especially with investing. Who would have ever guessed? Maybe, well, obviously not no one because someone bought the stock. But who would have guessed you could have doubled your stock or doubled your money by buying Macy's stock? I I would have never gambled that. I would never guess that. Now, the five-day trend, it looks like they're up 14.19%. And then the past day, they're actually down negative 6.51%. Now, the past couple of days, their stock jumped exponentially. So a couple of days ago, when this news first broke, it helped the stock jump up by about 21%. Just at the news of someone giving them a possible offer to buy them out, again, for $5.8 billion. Now, the specific offer is coming from a real estate investor, Arc House Management, and an asset manager, Brigade Capital Management. This is according to a source familiar with Matter that told Yahoo Finance. The offer values Macy's at $21 per share, was reportedly submitted on December 1st. The company's board is apparently mulling over the offer. Now, it looks like that offer price puts a 32.4, excuse me, 32.4% premium to Macy's. And of course, it helps share, rise the shares exponentially higher. Now, there are some people saying it may be actually undervalued. It looks like back in 2022, an investment bank Cohen valued Macy's real, uh, Macy's real estate holdings alone in the range of six to eight billion dollars with one of their prized real estate portfolio headlining being its iconic Herald Square location in New York City, which is one of the golden values of all these legacy, all these old companies. Back in the day, most real retailers actually owned the locations where they put their stores. Nowadays, it's overwhelmingly much, much more common for them to do is do a long-term lease agreement. Everything from Starbucks to big box retailers, usually they'll just have a lease either through a they just lease the actual land, or it's just through, if it's like a Starbucks, it's like a strip mall, it's just leased for that specific unit in the whole strip. And a lot of these companies, Sears included, well, part of that big value was that they owned the real estate, which, again, I'm not giving financial advice, 
truth be told, Lord knows I wish I bought land when I first moved to Texas. Housing has gone like 3x since I moved here. Jesus, Louise. Talk about another missed opportunity. But nevertheless, long term, more often than not, real estate does go up in value, which is why so many people, it's a whole investment community in and of itself. Now, Sears, they had that same instance where they had a lot of very valuable land. And a lot of people are concerned, well, if they buy out Macy's, let's say they do, you know, take it private. There's a lot of speculation that they might split the company into a real estate division and then a real estate division. And basically you have one company charge the other company and you just maximize that until they go bankrupt. This has happened before in other similar instances. I think most famously perhaps was Sears, where a very precarious situation where you had the CEO also being the investor of the company that was loaning them money and buying them out. Interesting topic for another time, perhaps. So it'll be interesting to see the real million, oh, I was gonna say million. The billion dollar question is now, is now the time for them to sell? And if they do go private, what's the upside? Are they gonna force them to divide the assets into the real estate and then just the retail? In what, at the end of the day, how would it benefit the company? More importantly, how would it benefit the consumers? How would it actually improve the customer experience when you're shopping there? I mean, they certainly have one of the most well-known brands in retail, but they've also been struggling throughout the years as e-commerce has blossomed to go exponentially more popular. And of course, I know Macy's probably has an interweb e-commerce platform as well, where you can buy t-shirts for the heck they sell these days. But let me know in the comments, do you think having them bought out, going private does give them some advantages. You can move a little bit more agile and worry about the stock price as much you can focus much more on making bigger decisions and bigger changes but let me know do you think it'd be a net benefit for them to go private or do you think this buyout would actually make the whole situation a lot worse i'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say other interesting business news you have blackberry naming a new ceo and they also abandoned a ipo plan for their iot business now this site comes to us thanks to Reuters, and they noted that at BlackBerry had appointed its head of cybersecurity unit, John Gilmato, as its CEO, as well as shelving their plan to spin off its Internet of Things business. Now, they also said that BlackBerry will now only separate the two businesses following a reassessment of the decision. The shift in plans comes against the backtrack of weak performances of newly listed companies such as Birkenstock, chip designer Arm Holdings, and grocery delivery app Instacart, Maple Bear Cart. They claim that BlackBerry also streamlined its centralized corporate functions so that each business unit may operate independently and on a more profitable and cash flow positive basis. Which interesting, yeah, in terms of, in terms of IPOs, ha timing is very much key. And right now, more often than not, the market is not really rewarding that. That's why in past 36 months especially, you've seen a lot of companies actually go private. A lot of cybersecurity companies especially have been bought up by private equity companies because again, there are certain advantages of going private. You can usually make decisions without as much speculation as a lot. Of, you make decisions without as much concerns that you may influence the short-term stock price, which again, could have snowball effect. There's different stresses in those types of situations. Now with BlackBerry, they've become a huge cybersecurity company in their own regard. They used to of course be known for making perhaps the most popular phones in history. And at one point, having a darn near monopoly on the category of the smartphone. But as many companies do suffer from, they suffered from a lack of innovation. They, they made the worst mistake any business can make or any person can make actually by underestimating their competition, which of course, Apple and Samsung came in and ate their lunch to say the least, gobbling up a majority of the smartphone market share. Now, BlackBerry has been pivoting. They bought out Silence a couple years ago, which is at the time a very innovative AI powered endpoint security, cybersecurity company. They haven't, I haven't seen them done much since and I work in cybersecurity. They claim that they're going after cybersecurity around vehicle technologies and trying to control, trying to secure those types of devices. But I mean, Silence was pretty big, uh, especially with corporate accounts or enterprise businesses. A lot of them were starting to use that for their it's kind of pejorative to say antivirus, it's much more fancier. Now you have things like XDR, MDR, and I could probably spend a whole hour talking about acronyms in and of itself. But in terms of my perspective, owning a tech company, the BlackBerry team 
I mean, a lot of the businesses that were utilizing Silence, once BlackBerry actually bought them out, a lot of them actually kicked them out of the account, AKA they chose not to renew the technology and they chose to go with a different brand or more appropriately a different company for their security needs. So it'll be interesting to see, again, the IoT things, that's a huge growing category. It's a cliche as old time, as old as time actually in IT. Again, I'm not a doctor, but if you click the subscribe button, it very well may assist in my speaking ineptitudes and my lack of enunciation. Again, there's very few things in life that are 100% guarantee, but I'm just saying, can't help but, right? Can't hurt, give it a shot. That's all I'm saying. So it'll be interesting to see with BlackBerry, again, they definitely need some new leadership because again, I mean, what's their stock doing lately? This might be sad. <laughs> but I did actually read their book a couple weeks ago. It was pretty fascinating. Obviously, the movie that came out with, uh, is it Glenn Howard? One of the, the stars from his house, Sunny in Philadelphia. And, I mean, the founder said it has nothing to do with the, there's a big, main discrepancies between real life and the movie, as there often are. But, yeah, just seeing the preview for the movie, I just knew it was BS in terms of the actual story. It's, yeah, read the actual book. The book is Blackberry... Let's see here. I believe it's actually by Rod McQueen. And it's called BlackBerry, the story of research in motion, which is the actual legal name of the company before the product BlackBerry became so popular and so successful. They actually renamed the company after the product, a fascinating business phenomenon of itself. Now, BlackBerry looking at their stock, again, the five-year trend, not great, down negative 45.53%. Now, their stock right now, of course, by the time I publish this, it might have who knows? It, that'd be hilarious if it actually spiked up exponentially since I published this. The odds are not great that it would happen. But nevertheless, the stock is currently at $4.14 per share of BlackBerry stock. Five-year trend is down negative 45.53%. In the past year, not terrible. It's down, but it's only down 6.55%. Year to date, geez Louise, pretty good. They're up 25.08%. I didn't see that coming. Now, that being said, the past six months, they're down negative 20.54%. In the past month, they're up 17.61%. Past five days, pretty much break, eh, pretty about break even, 3.76% increase. So, again, it's probably one of the cheapest tech stocks you can actually buy these days, under $5 per share. And it's crazy to think, what do they? When they peak with their stock, they're over a hundred dollars back in two thousand eight. I think they peaked around one hundred and fifty dollars or something like that, way back in the day. So again, they, I mean, they had one of the most strongest legacy brands in technology, but they just failed to innovate. They did make some smart acquisitions, so now they're a pure software company. If you see a BlackBerry phone that's new. That's a licensing agreement. They have nothing to do with the actual design or manufacture of those actual devices. That's nothing more than a royalty of, hey, give me some money and I'll let you put the logo on there. So don't get too excited if you do see a BlackBerry branded product physically out there these days. So let me know, do you think is now the time to buy into BlackBerry? Do you think they'll actually increase their performance going into 2024? I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Bud Light, Here We Go, Dake gets 90 likes. Not even the Dallas Cowboys can save the Bud Light brand. Now, I did a little bit of research, and apparently, Mr. Dak, which is an interesting name in and of itself, is the first name of Dak Prescott, who is a sports balls player on the Dallas Cowboys. Perhaps he is, apparently he is the quarterback. All I know is it's a quarterback that isn't Tom Brady, so he's probably not going to win a Super Bowl. Just statistically speaking, I know sports balls, it's a good bet where Tom Brady usually wins the big trophies. I think the Cowboys, the last, I have, I think I have some pictures of the Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl celebration, but it's on floppy disk. Haha, <laughs> IT pun, and a little bit of a time capsule, which also shows you the last time they won a Super Bowl, was when we used floppy disk. Which if you're a youth, if you go into a Microsoft Word document and you click the save button, the little save icon is actually a picture of a floppy disk, which is a metallic disk where we used to save images onto. 
we later progressed to CDs, then flash drives, then for some people now they just save it to the cloud. That's a little bit of fun IT history, as well as history of the Dallas Cowboys, which from a business perspective, I highly admire the team. I mean, Jerry Jones is a business genius. They are the most valuable team on the planet, even though they don't win Super Bowls. Worth over a billion, no, sorry, nine billion plus dollars. And to be the official X brand of the Cowboys is hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, from a business perspective, it is perhaps that's why I admire them in sports balls teams, even though I can't name the last time they actually made a touch pass. Ha, huh. joke. I know that's an amalgamation of different words, but nevertheless, it looks like Bud Light attempted to use the fame and the allure of the Dallas Cowboys, which actually now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the official the official beer, quote unquote, of the Dallas Cowboys, I believe it's Miller Light. If you go to the stadium or Jerry World, as many of us call it, if you actually, and actually had a fun little IT event we hosted there with the Hewlett Packard Enterprise a little a couple months ago, um, I didn't know much of what was, was going on in the sports balls fields, but I did like to I played the I Spy game and look at all the different logos everywhere and kind of the business behind it is what fascinates me. And interestingly enough, the biggest beer logos were Miller Lite, which would go to tell you that that's probably their golden sponsor, the biggest sponsor for that particular category of product. So it's interesting that Bud Light is trying to tweet about the Cowboys when it's not like the official brand, which maybe they just didn't pay enough money this year. Now, the actual logo, or rather the actual tweet from Bud Light, which again, they should have a huge cult following on the Twitter sphere because they're a huge brand. They still only got 18,000 views, which is ridiculous to say the least. Only 18,000 views. And even more pathetic, they got 90 likes for this. Not to brag, but one of my YouTube videos will sometimes get 90 likes. It's not very frequent, but I'm also not a multi-trillion dollar company with, or multi-trillion dollar, billion dollar company with assets to just constantly do advertising. They have all those resources and yet they got 90 likes for this statement. Now the statement from Bud Light, their tweet is quote, Again, they're pretty excited or bombastic when they wrote this. So this is all caps, mind you. They say, here we go at DAC. So I don't know if that's also a spelling error because go has like four O's, but nevertheless, again, that got 90 likes and they did link it to Mr. Dake Prescoots. Ha, kidding. The internet told me it's Prescott in terms of pronunciation. And his profile says Louisiana Pride, Mississippi Grind Cowboy Living Mom, M O M, what? Hashtag Hail Estate. Interesting. And yeah, he's immensely popular on the sports balls world. It looks like he's got 1.5 million followers. He joined in 2011 on the Twitter sphere. And it looks like many pictures of him. What is this? Doing sports balls things, and he has a very prominent hat. So, a hat enthusiast, probably, as well as sports balls player, interestingly enough. And yet, one of the most popular, if you, I mean, I watch some, no, well, I watch too many sports balls. If I have a customer event, I do. But, nevertheless, he's a hugely popular quarterback. Haven't won a Super Bowl. Can't believe Jerry didn't get Tom Brady, but nevertheless. This is a hugely popular person, and yet tagging this person basically did nothing for the social media. So let's go in the comments. Maybe maybe they're all overwhelmingly supportive of the Cowboys and their winning record. So going down, one of the first responses comes from Michelle Peterson, and she actually just said, let's go. Now, she got zero likes for that, but she did say a positive statement. Now looking at her profile. <laughs> oh. So she is a Dodge lover. So I guess she's an enthusiast of dodging vehicles or perhaps purchasing a Dodge pickup trucks. She has 2,900 followers, joined in 2018. So it looks like a real profile. And going through her profile, real but perhaps mentally vacuous because it is again, a repost, a repost, a repost, a repost. All these reposts for like free crap, like all the scams was like, oh yeah, if you repost, we're gonna give a $100 gift card to someone. Which, again, how, I don't know how little someone's time is actually repost all these things. But, yeah, it looks like a serial reposter. Which begs the question, is Bud Light just paying these people like 18 cents every time they say something nice about the company? 
I mean, that's not that unconceivable given the, what we're seeing here. That Bud Light actually responded to her. They said, quote, time to crack one open, unquote, and that got one like. So someone actually did like that from Bud Light. Presumably it was her. Now, it is hilarious that Bud Light did not clarify what they're going to crack open. What they do in their own personal life is their business. But it is funny they did not clarify. Someone else responded with a Bud Light, what is that, a dartboard? But again, the, all the positive statements to the original Bud Light tweet, or as we call it now, a post, they're not getting any likes. Even from Bud Light, which shows their ineptitudes, they can't even like someone who said something nice about them. I mean, that's social media 101. I will always, well, granted, from my schedule, I always get to the comments. I apologize if it might be a little bit of a delay. But if you give me accolades or even just critical feedback that helps me grow, I'll give you a thumbs up in the comments section. I'll read it, and I'll usually highlight it so it can be uh, shown at the top. But that's just me. And, I mean, who am I to criticize Bud Light? They're, they're, they're certainly brilliant with their marketing. Oh, wait, no. They're the, perhaps the biggest business blender in the century with their marketing department. Now, the first response that actually gets likes comes from Dave Ernst Kag, and he says, quote, I'm drinking real beer, Miller Lite, and watching 60 Minutes. Not woke, Bud Light, and the NFL, unquote. I got 17 likes. Now, another person responded. This person is called the toughest rooster in Letterkenny. And they do get a A- minus for marketing. Their profile picture is of a rooster. However, that just begs the question, how do they teach the rooster to type on a keyboard? Or a smartphone, perhaps. We'll just say this alleged loose rooster says, quote, Here we gay, unquote. They got 18 likes. The most popular response thus far is from an alleged rooster. Interesting. James Russell says something popular. He says, quote, Dak is back just like Bud Light, unquote. I did get one like. Back from what? Did he go on vacation? Or is the sports ball season starting again? Did he come from another sports ball's team? Did they trade him away for a season and just no one noticed? Interesting. Kind of? Nah, not so much. Going down, other popular comments comes from How Many Natties says, quote, Beer for the Q word. Which is a pejorative word for the gay community. Which is interesting enough. I don't know if that's a word where if you say it, you get your video gets not censored, but taken down automatically, depending on if you are not that orientation. The rules on YouTube are as ambiguous and as hard to interpret as the IRS tax code, which is why I pay someone very much smarter than me to actually do those types of things for me, well, at least for taxes. That might be a fascinating job of the future. A YouTube interpreter. Can any human truly interpret all the legalese of the terms and conditions? I'm sure there could, but that sounds like a job for a very experienced lawyer. Now, that did get three likes for that statement. Derek Mesker says, quote, tuck your sack back 24 pack, unquote. That got seven likes. Ed Greenlee has, I've got the doctor from back in, not back in the future, the Hangover movies. There's actually a doctor, I've got the Asian American's name. He's also an actor now. And it's some movie or TV show where he's in, and he's in the back of a classroom, and he simply cups his hands like when you're shouting as a youth, and he simply says, Gay! They got 10 likes. Rose says, quote, Glad Bud Light just made the Cowboys more sus, unquote. Got three likes. Brad Grand says, quote, 336,000 followers, and 16 hours later, I'm the 14th comment. Talk about a dead brand, unquote. I got six likes and an astute observation for so many followers. How could they possibly, well, we all know why they failed so much, but it's fascinating to see them continue to shoot themselves in the high heel boot like a Ron DeSantis campaign. I can't help but wonder, do they use the same marketing staff? That wouldn't be out of the, out of the ballpark. Or out of the Clydesdale barn? Something in that effect in terms of a metaphor. A, he simply says, shut up, perverts. No one is buying your act. No one wants your stupid beer, unquote. I got four likes. Though, fact check, again, their sales are still 70% of what they used to be for that particular brand. 
that being Bud Light, Budweiser, that's around 10% lower, so they still get retained at 90% of their customers. And then Michelob Ultra is the third most effective brand. I believe they lost about 3.8% of their sales. So still an overwhelming majority of people are still purchasing the product, even though it is the most successful conservative boycott in business history that I have seen. And scrolling through the comments, you get a lot of, ooh, what's this? It says show additional replies, including those that make a show contain offensive content. Of course I wanna see those. Why would they even ask me that? That should be a default you built into your profile. But Lord knows, Bud Light likes the censorship. Gambling Joe's, and this is one of the super duper hidden responses. Gambling Joe, he says, quote, this tweet made me want to stop drinking Bud Light more than the Dill Mulvaney shit did. F the Cowboys, unquote, with an exclamation point. That got four likes. And again, if I, if I were Jerry Jones, I would tell Bud Light there's no way. They do not associate with my brand. My $9 billion empire I built from brick by brick. How dare you threaten our brand success? I mean, they, again, I believe the official beer of the Cowboys is still Metal Light. Jerry could just say, hey, give us, what, half a billion dollars to be the official brand? I don't know when the contract expires with Miller Light, but it is, again, I know the official, the Bud Light brand is the official brand of the NFL. Does that give them the legal right to tag these people on their social media? Because again, they're pulling the Cowboys in with this tweet. They're tagging their sports balls quarterback. And it, hilariously enough, that quarterback apparently didn't respond to it. Because I looked at all of his responses. I'm not seeing the actual quarterback. And again, only less than 100 people liked it. Now, Mr. Earl Jones Pure simply says, F Bud Light, unquote. And they got two likes. So as the youth might say, they were ratioed to say the least. Because again, I mean, all the people... I mean, granted, it's a small sample size of like three people who said something positive about Bud Light. They look like they're all frauds. So let's go scroll back up really quick. We'll go to Eric. He just said, any letter qualifies as a bullseye? What? I mean, that's... So I don't know if he's just mentally vacuous because he drinks Bud Light or if it makes him mentally vacuous because he's drinking Bud Light. But I guess he's making up his own rules to the darts game where you have the darts board and on the outer ring of the board, you have the font, you have the Bud Light logo. But so he's insinuating you get bonus points. If you are so bad at darts, you miss the entire circle of the darts and you hit the outline of the dart board because the Bud Light logo is there. So he's, he's quite literally incentivizing ineptitudes. Again, it's been a couple years since I played darts, but I know you're supposed to go for the middle. Now let's go look at this, Mr. Uh, Eric profile because again that and of course I got they did get 482 views for that specific dartboard but it got zero likes which means not even Bud Light took the fresh of a second to like one of the very few positive responses now his profile this is the dartboard Eric says he's joined October 2022 has 2470 followers so it looks looks like it's a real profile he says he is a quote Again, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on YouTube, the Q word conservative, so he's a gay conservative. That's his words in the uh, bio. He says, quote, I believe we can be gay and patriotic at the same time. Come hug me. <laughs> My pronouns are America and USA. All races, ethnicities welcome, unquote. Okay, seems like a legit profile. And the response, or his uh, tweets, eh, looks like they're, all right, he looks like he's a bodybuilder. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like all real tweets. They're all actual tweets about him. Looks like going to the gym, um, putting comical, what do you call this? I think the reindeer antlers onto dogs. So, I mean, it's a real person. I'm actually shocked because, again, the other ones are all people who are just retweeting for the sweepstakes stuff where you can win $100, some crap like that, which is just ridiculous to say the least. But Bud Light didn't like that, interestingly enough. So they don't even like the few positive fans they have left at Bud Light. So needless to say, as the youth would say, their ratio to say the least. And again, is this pushing the needle forward to actually that, having them increase their sales and reverse the trend around the disintegration that is the Bud Light brand? 
I don't think so, but again, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting cultural news you have, Anheuser-Busch National Locker Day is ratioed. Which, truth be told, don't we have a day for darn near everything? I swear I'm always missing out if I just sit down and I don't think, it's just a day with nothing, I don't know if that's possible anymore. I know as a youth, even when I was growing up, we even had Pi Day, which was to celebrate March 14th, January, February, March, yeah, 3.1415926. How many decimals do you remember growing up? But nevertheless, now, and as your Bush, again, they're the giant multinational company between, uh, behind 40 plus beer brands that many people used to love and remember. Now, they had a tweet in which they say, quote, cheers to the beer that never let us down. Happy National Lager Day. And is a picture, uh, unquote, and it's a picture of, well, actually it's, I'd say it's well designed in terms of it's a pint glass with the Budweiser logo laser etched into it. And it is mostly filled with undrinkable beer. In this case, it's a good example of the beer glass. You know, is a glass half full? Well, in this case, I don't know if that's a good thing. But visually speaking, you could indeed say it is. Now, they say it's never let us down. Really? I don't know if that's false advertising. But, again, how many people, even before the strike or before the boycott, how many people really loved Budweiser and Bud Light? Like, they loved it. It wasn't just because they're the cheapest or the most pot. Like, it was... It, it, to me, it was always what was like f not free, but you'd have a party and the beer would be there by like default. It wasn't exactly something you stride for, like you had a really long day. And you're like, oh goody, I'll I need one of these. But maybe I'm alone in my assessment. Let's go into the comic section and find out. Let's see here. And again, a multi-trillion-dollar valuable company. They got 8,084 views for that tweet and 106 likes, which was, again, almost mathematically and possibly unpopular. 8,000 views for a tweet from one of the largest, most fiscally successful beer companies on the planet. That's, that's almost unfathomably bad, but I guess not so much. We know who's working in their marketing department. Now, let's look at the top comments. Someone by the name of Thomas Manners says, quote, have some cold buds while I watch football, unquote. Three people liked it? Is this a real person? Going to his profile, he has, he describes himself as a, quote, Midwest guy that's li living, wait, a Midwest guy just living life. You literally just described, well, yes, everyone is technically living life that's alive. Already, this biography on his Twitter is lackluster to say the least. Nevertheless, I'll read the whole thing in full. So he's a, quote, Midwest guy just living life. Avid sports fans, Cardinals, Blues, St. Louis City, SC, Chiefs, Celtics, Vols. Hashtag I stand with Nick Carter. I thought that was a movie. Coach Carter? Nevertheless, he also joined in 2009. Has 771 followers. Let's see here. He says, one of his tweets says, why well, I'm voting for Bill Eigel. Who the heck is that? Because we should be encouraging vehicle owners not finding it. Okay. It's actually an apt statement. So it looks like, uh, all right, looks like there's a real profile. He's not just reposting the free sweepstakes crap where they have that cliche as old time as if you just retweet, we'll do a little raffle and someone win a hundred dollar gift card or some crap like that. So it looks like it is a real person. Now scrolling down to someone by the name of Sam Rack says, quote, happy logger. Another positive, interestingly enough, it's another positive tweet. This person had, let's see here. Person has joined, that person joined Twitter in 2015. He says, I'm a single fine tech, music, sport, media, journalism, real estate enthusiast, and multilingual, lingual, inspiring big C's. 
Well, this person stays busy. Jeez Louise, that's a lot. Fine, financial tech, music, sports, media, journalism. Joined 2015, 285 followers. Eh. I'll say, eh. 50 50 shot, he's real. Scrolling through, it's a lot of just reposting random crap. Yeah, we'll just say, aha, he's a serial reposter for Budweiser. He did a repost of the Budweiser, that Bud's for you, that they did a few weeks back. Yeah, he even re he reposted the tweet we were talking about right now, the Anheuser-Busch National Lager Day. Which, again, I don't know. I never understood the retweet things when, unless this person's a shareholder of Anheuser-Busch and Bev. Interesting. All right, so that's two positive statements. I didn't think they'd exist. Dear the, dear the, oh my gosh, is it three for three? Someone by the name of Asta World Burns, or if you know how to read and you're not dyslexic, a proper person could read that and they would say, oh yeah, as the world burns, of course. I'm not a doctor. However, if you click subscribe, it could help with my speaking ineptitudes. It's not 100% guaranteed. Very few things in life are. Just saying, it might very well help. Can't. Can't hurt shot. Give a shot, you know. Now, as the world burns, this particular profile, where they simply just responded with an emoji of a beer glass, that got two likes. Person has nine followers. Joined in two thousand twenty. It looks like, oh, they are a, yeah, a serial reposter, for Bud Light. Interestingly enough. So they are reposting everything Bud Light as well as Budweiser and a bunch of other random, hey, even I guess Bush Light as well. A bunch of retweets. Oh yeah, sweepstakes, a lot of sweepstakes. So perhaps mentally vacuous freebie chaser, Mr. As the World Burns. Now we're getting, and again, I got two likes. Now we're getting to the real stuff. Someone by the name of Maggie Milo says, quote, still not buying it, regards to Alyssa and Dylan, unquote. They got nine likes and it is infinitely more popular than the other ones. They only got two to three. Or, instead of infinitely more accurately, it's three times as popular. Now, that's in regard to Alyssa Heiderschild, who is the hilarious, inept marketing manager, or VP, I forgot the actual title, who is behind the Dylan Mulvaney controversy, in which Bud Light basically shot themselves in the high-heeled boot arguably as bad as Ron DeSantis's high-heeled boots. Now, Craig Randall, another comment, says, quote, never again, Bud Light blocked me, poor Peyton Manning, unquote. That got seven likes and is a reference to another sports balls player that Bud Light is giving lots of money to in an attempt to win back favor with their previous customers. Craig Randall also did a tweet response with a little video showing Dylan Mulvaney dancing and... It's before Dylan's speech at Penn State where Dylan is a biological man dressed up as a female, oh, I was about to say che female cheerleader, a cheerleader. And, yep, um, inappropriate to say the least in terms of the attire. And that, and the text was, why would anyone, why would anyone want this dude promoting them? Unquote. And they got three likes. Ryan Tree Fitty simply says, no. Got three likes. Route 66 Centennial says, quote, are you talking about Guinness? I'm confused, LOL. Oh wait, Miller? No wait, that's champagne. Ah, I know, it's Perioni? Bella? LOL. The point is, you didn't say the name, say the name, silly beer. Have a pint in us, LOL. Got two likes. Don Stringer says simply, nope, never again, unquote. I got six likes. Right from the D says, quote, you let longtime customers down this year, unquote, getting four likes. A lot of throw up emojis, getting between three and five likes. There's a couple of poop emojis, getting three likes. Eric E says, quote, you have let real America down. I'll never buy your beer again, unquote. Got six likes. Jasper says, quote, it certainly let your stock price down. 
unquote, I got three likes and many memes of Dylan Mulvaney. Let's see, show more replies. The GameStop emoji of the biological man who's dressed up as a woman who got really angry saying it's ma'am when someone allegedly called the biological man a man, which is a fascinating viral phenomenon in and of itself on social media a little while back. So that's also in the comments section. A lot of referencing them. Philip says, quote, you suck, go woke, we're broke, unquote. I got one like. Aha, now we're the fun stuff. Show additional replies, including those that may contain offensive content. Of course, show. Let's see here. It is I, one of the super duper offensive tweets, simply says, quote, we haven't forgot, sit the F down, unquote. I got four likes. Anthony Leach says, quote, F off, you woke clowns, unquote. Got two likes. And interestingly enough, the person did not actually use the F word. They literally just said F off. So, yeah, it's interesting. Twitter actually thought that was deemed worth even that additional censorship for it. And, of course, there's also the, what do you call it, the hidden responses button at the very beginning. If you click that, someone said, quote, needless to say, I'm pretty excited to crack a crisp one of this. Hashtag National Lager Day, and it looks like a biological man dressed as a woman grabbing his junk. That did get one like before Bud Light, or in this case, Anheuser Bush, their profile re get put it to the censored part or the hidden responses. So again, as the youth might say, Anheuser Bush was yet again ratioed beyond all belief. And again, I don't think the I don't think the contrarian statements or the statements against the post of the original Bud Anheuser Bush, but like I don't think they're going to stop until they address the 500 pound grill in the room, the 500 pound elephant in the room, or more appropriately, the 95 pound Dilmulvaney in the room, which I don't think they can do. They've made soft comments, almost pretending, almost as if they apologize, but not really giving a real one because they know then they'll be boycotted even more by people who are, as this has become a political issue, people who are more on the left. So they are between a rock and a hard place, and I don't see them regaining the previous customer base anytime soon. Although, let me know if you think differently. It'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the political part of the podcast, you have Vivek on Elizabeth Warren's net worth going viral. Now, Elizabeth Warren has contributed, I believe, about nothing to modern society. She was most famously known for lying, saying she was a Native American to get into, I believe it was Harvard Law School or some college. And then years later found out, oh yeah, she, she has... She's like not even 1% Native American. She just used that to lie to get into college. And I believe she also got a scholarship, a scholarship for that. Well, if you go to Wikipedia, Elizabeth Warren, I don't think she's ever contributed anything to society. I think she's uh, in politics most of her life. Let me see here. She was in office. 2008, early in life. What, has she ever? High school, Houston. She had a job. I, 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 I'm breaking history right here right now, folks. She. It looks like she may have actually contributed something to society. I, I stand corrected. She actually it looks like she had a job. Allegedly, she was employed by IBM in the '70s. Although, if you know anything about IBM, you could also argue they're the most morally vacuous co uh, company in history, given what they did with World War II around you know numbers tracking people and basically being the technology that enabled Germany. Another dark story for another time. So is that really her only... She got a degree in speech pathology and audiology. Moved to New Jersey. Oh, that's good. <laughs> researching. She taught law. Yeah. Nah, I think I was right in my first assessment. Someone who's debatably contributed nothing to society. Mostly known for being a leech, as many politicians are. And it looks like Vivek is starting to notice, well, what's this? There's some big discrepancies between what you're paid and what your net worth is. Also, you really don't do much for work. Why are you worth, why are you worth so, so much? 
And yet, of course, she doesn't want anyone else to have money. You know, if you work hard for a living, she wants to take your wealth. She wants to extract more of your wealth with taxes. Now, Vivek says, quote, The math adds up to corruption. GOP and Dems are both bad on this front. Call it bipartisanship. And he retweeted, unquote, and he retweeted a picture, a little infograph from Gaber Gerbox. And this person says, quote, $285,000 salary, $67 million net worth. What's the math on this? And they have a picture of Elizabeth Warren, which I know, creepy in and of itself. And it looks like her net worth is $67 million. Her salary is, again, $285,000 per year, which move that decimal place over one, two, three five places, and I would still argue that she's being overpaid. Now, her monthly income is about $400,000. Born June 27th, 1949. Jeez Louise. Now, there is a reader's added context. They say, quote, according to public records, Elizabeth Warren has a net worth of $4.8 million, $4 million to $11.75 million. Okay, that's still a lot. Where's that money coming from? Yeah, and interestingly enough, again, she wants to tax you, but again, cliche as old as time for politicians, left and right, rules for thee, but not for ye me. Or, where's Kanye yeah, West? That'd be an even better reference, not for ye. Another t pun for another time, perhaps. Now, going to the comics section, again, this went pretty darn viral. Vivek got 2.8 million views from that and 40,000 likes. Now, one of the first responses comes from Alec Lace, and he says, the math never adds up. And he has a picture compilation where you have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in, 2000, in the Texas 2019. Biden's net worth was $9 million. Kamala Harris's was $6.3 million? That's a lot of money for doing allegedly stuff. And then in the other picture is, you know, that's 2019. 2022, Joe Biden's net worth is $41 million. And Kamala Harris is $28 million. They got 510 likes. Paul Susie Pala says, quote, Funny that Elizabeth Warren says billionaires should pay their fair share, yet she's been getting filthy rich robbing the U.S. taxpayer and doing favors for special interest. She's your typical left hypocritical politician. Is Pocahontas still pretending to be Native American? Unquote. They got 527 likes. Which again, she did lie saying she was Native American in order to get into college. And I believe she also got a scholarship for that as well. Which also goes to show the ridiculous hypocrisy as well. If someone on the right did that, they'd be ousted in one eighth of a second. There'd be 20 million articles on every news outlet condemning that person. And Elizabeth Warren, as far as I can tell, had no repercussions for lying and doing that. Interesting. Nancy Pelosi Stock Tracker says, quote, Welcome to the world of politician math, unquote. They got 305 likes. I don't know if this person is inebriated with Bud Light, but this person, or alleged person, someone by the name of Wealth Turtle, now this Wealth Turtle does have a profile picture of a turtle, though I don't suspect a real turtle is tweeting, perhaps. This Wealth Turtle says, quote, Elizabeth Warren should just retire from politics and start an OnlyFans, unquote. I got 80 likes, which, again, if there's ever an argument for destroying the internet, that, I, I can't fathom having that content out there. That would be that, re reprehensible to humanity, to say the least. Now, Fly Guy says, quote, Do the corrupt Republicans, too? Both sides have boatloads of bad apples, unquote. Got 31 likes, and yes, it should be called out appropriately every time it is seen. Let's see here. See, going down. Someone actually took a quote from Elizabeth Warren saying, quote, one of the biggest threats to a functioning market is insider trading. Sometimes a high-ranking government official might know about a change in a government policy that can powerfully affect a corporation, unquote. The irony is quite unpalatable. I got 78 likes. Paint the Trump says, quote, that's one crooked, greedy, filthy woman. I mean, Indian, unquote. Got 22 likes. It's not rocket science, says, quote, 
Pelosi, 10 terms. Why? These people are corrupt, unquote. Getting 54 likes. Gabriel Gerbach says, quote, I hope voters give you the chance to clean it all up. Thank you for speaking up about important issues, unquote. Got 95 likes. Though that's perhaps why I'm a little bit pessimistic, thinking why might Vivek not get more traction in the polls? Well, he's calling out, out a lot of people on both sides, making them look bad. Heaven forbid they actually take some accountability once in a while. Let's see here. Brandon says, quote, and she's trying to stop cryptocurrency because she doesn't want anyone else to make money. I'm so sick of these politicians. Something needs to be done about this, unquote. Got 43 likes. Chase Geisler says, quote, turns out you can get a lot of money threatening to split up big tech, unquote. Got 71 likes. Real Hope says, quote, I remember that face she called Elon Musk out for not paying taxes. Elon paid a huge amount of taxes, by the way. Did she? She is a professional Karen, unquote. Got 66 likes. And Elon has paid more taxes than anyone in living history. Yet, it's still not enough for these people. Let's see here. James says, quote, maybe we should investigate her instead of people who are just trying to pay groceries, unquote. Got 73 likes. Patriot JC says, quote, this is why we are 33 chilling in debt while politicians are living lavish lifestyles, unquote. Getting 39 likes. Now, granted, in terms of why the U.S. is in so much debt, it's not just because they're getting paid outlandish salaries to work for the government. There's a myriad of reasons. I think one of the biggest ones is also them spending money, quite literally trillions of, mo trillions of dollars, on things that also don't directly benefit Americans and are just boondoggles, just basically to the effect of flushing money down the toilet. And as I continue to go through the comments, I'm not seeing a single person sticking up for Elizabeth Warren. This very well might be one of the most popular tweets from Vivek as they're just all overwhelmingly supporting him. Now, other interesting political news, you have Ron DeSantis' inner monologue par parody goes viral. Now, this was someone who took, there's a little video of Ron DeSantis and it was during the debates. And there's always some little awkward moments where you're waiting for the cameras to get set up and the assistants will come and they'll help you know, straighten a tie or maybe they'll help you, if you're Mike Pence, maybe shoot a fly off your head. Now, someone had the brilliant idea to actually over put Ron DeSantis' inner monologue. Now, this comes from Magical Trevor Meme TV. This person says, quote, and now Ron's inner thoughts, unquote. And it is a short clip, but highly entertaining. And granted, this is a really Ron DeSantis, most likely. All right, gotta act human, gotta act human, gotta act human, gotta act human. Uh, this is so hard. Yeah, drink water. Yeah, I should drink some water. That's what humans do. Humans drink water. There we go. I'm on around a little bit. Let's see my neck stiff still. Uh, I gotta get the wobbling, wobbling. Come on. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Uh, it's stuck. Okay. All right. Just think about, think about wobble. Thinking about wobble. Go to your happy place. Go to your happy. It is hilarious also that, I mean, he's the only politician that's not, he doesn't have a whole army of assistants that's helping him in real time. You see on the screen all these other politicians like Nikki Haley has another 15 pounds of makeup being thrown on her, I believe. Well, fact check, maybe 16 pounds. And you have a couple other guys walking around. Everyone just looks really busy, and then Ron's just kind of standing there, just chilling. Which just, it, it just comes off as hilariously awkward. Place. All right, do we put our foot out? Do we put a hand on a hand? I'm not real sure what to do with my hands. Oh my God, what do humans do with their hands? Okay, now put them in my pocket. Oh, oh shit, I'm not supposed to have a cell phone. Now they all keep saying I don't have a cell phone. Oh, no, no, that's not a cell phone. <laughs> okay, oh geez. Oh, what am I gonna do? Oh, this button is barely hanging on for dear life. Oh, I wobble my head, I wobble my head. Oh geez, who else is here? Anybody here I know? Oh God, there's Laura Loomer. Oh, there's Laura Loomer. I just saw Laura Loomer. What am I going to... Okay. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Put my right foot in. Put my right foot out. Put my right foot in. Wobble my head all around. Okay. Uh, I can get through this. I can do this. 
I can do this. I don't care what they say. I'm awesome. I'm the man. Uh, stand still. What? Oh, come closer. Okay, yeah. How's that? No, I'm not wearing lifts. No, no, I'm 5'11". I'm, I'm 5'11", 5'11", 5'11". <laughs> hey, remember that song? That was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, our own button. Hold on for your life, buddy. Oh, man. Nikki smells weird. <laughs> And it looks like the end gives credits to, it says, Trump's online war machine, Dilly Memes Team. Now, that got 178,000 views and 1.8 thousand likes on that very on that specific individual. It looks like it was retweeted about 814, or re, I guess, you don't retweet anything anymore, it's reposted. So it was reposted about 814 times. And Count the Wonder... And probably I will be all overwhelmingly hilariously supporting of anyone but just answer to the comments. Just dive in to find out. Outlaw Jay-Z Wales says, quote, It's safe to say that we missed a year of meme hilarity that with Ron's inner thoughts, this is better than Earpiece Guy, unquote. Got 48 likes. Magical Trevor Meme TV responded saying, Yeah, I don't really have the tools for it until recently. Look out, though, LOL. Got 33 likes. Anthony Hughes says, quote, LOL, I legit fell out of my chair laughing at this, unquote, getting 25 likes. Mags says, quote, absolutely fantastic, unquote, getting 30 likes. Let's see here. Revolver says, quote, wrecked, 511, 511, 511, LOL, unquote, getting 17 likes. Maria Gerlinger says, quote, look at all the pampering of Nikki, unquote, getting 3 likes. Where, again, you saw pounds of makeup and other things being put plastered on to Nikki Haley. Let's see. D. Franzer memes. That's a Joe Rogan meme. Or the gif where he freaks out at the UFC side table. Got 21 likes. And an overwhelm... Well, let's see here. Let's see a couple more. Dozens upon dozens of replies just doing, you know, LOL. A lot of the laughy emoji. Let's see here. Yeah, I'd say those are all game between zero and five likes. Uh, Sailor Gal says, quote, Why doesn't he wear a jacket that fits? Even mall department store suits come in different sizes and fits, unquote. Got three likes. A lot of people saying it's hysterical. LOL. AD says, quote, too funny. You have to, you do have to wonder what Ron and others are thinking during those breaks. Nikki seems very comfortable having her hair com combed, unquote. Getting two likes, which, I don't know how it doesn't freak. It just seems weird having someone else comb your hair while you're just standing there. Seems bizarre, but that's just me. And again, just all overwhelmingly hilarious positive responses. Well, positive against Vivek. Let's see here. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, again, all overwhelming. Do we see more of these internal monologues? As DeSantis continues to just have a little bit of an awkwardness around him? I can't but wonder, will this be the next viral thing on the internet? And then this thing, we just kind of see it every two seconds. Everyone's starting to do these parodies. Got a fair amount of views, and it's quite comical. be interesting to see where it goes from there. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Doritos to launch a nacho cheese flavored vodka for reasons. And I don't know how inebriated you have to be to eat Doritos to begin with, but perhaps this will help inspire more copious amounts of shoveling that, I don't even know what you call it. I'm pretty sure there might be a modicum of natural flavor in there somewhere, but shoveling down the corn syrup and all the stuff they put in the foods these days into your gullet. So maybe it'll help increase their sales. Now this comes to us thanks to Jordan Valinsky at CNN Business. And they say, quote, Doritos thinks we want a nacho cheese flavored booze. And it's got the iconic Doritos logo there. And they noted that, quote, the PepsiCo owned brand is releasing a new spirit based off Doritos nacho cheese flavor that, quote, Tastes like the real thing, unquote. The chip part maker has partnered with Empirical, a Danish company known for making custom spirits with 
creative flavors. Available online only, the limited edition flavor goes on sale in New York and California earlier this week and costs up to $65 for a 750 milliliter bottle. This is, they claim it's not the first zany food adjacent product from a big brand. Recently, Kahlua and Absolute Vodka made a fragrance that smell, smells like espresso martini and Duncan turned its iced coffee and teas into canned cocktails. Also, Arby's turned its curly and crinkle fries into a vodka, as well as created a smoked bourbon to be paired with its roasted beef. I mean, I can't fathom how many people are actually buying these things, or if they're buying them in a quantity in which these companies are making a profit off of it, or if it's just a loss leader just to be a hilarious marketing pun. Like, it does get people talking about it, because, well, shoot, right here, right now we're talking about it, and anecdotally speaking, a couple of my friends are talking about it just because they thought it was just so bizarre and stupid. No one actually, no one actually said they wanted to buy. It, now that I think about it, they're just saying, "Can you believe this is happening?" And then we ask the question, like, who would buy this? Now, they also know that for Doritos and Empirical, the companies are describing this collaboration as a quote, first of a kind innovation for both brands. Which they claim that the spirit was made in Empirical's lab through a production process that used Dorito chips to retain their quote essence through vacuum distillation, which the spirit maker says preserves more than Dorito's flavor compared to the traditional method. Now this just this description sounds so hilarious, and it does show the importance of marketing. You gotta put some extra fancy words in there. Now they say the spirit's flavor quote opens with unami and tangy aroma of nacho cheese, moving toward the deeper corn forward flavors of the chip to finish with a soft, salty note, unquote. Which just reminds me of the overly, bom not bombastic, but some of the traditional products where it's like whiskey or scotch, where some people describe it. I don't know if they're describing a scene in a book or if they're describing some random flavors on the back of an ingredients bottle but it almost sounds like a, a novel, not an actual you know list of ingredients or actual you know how does it actually smell. It's just so over the top, and to me it just comes off as comical and ironically you know not as authentic. Now they also quoted, I went on to say, it's from uh, Neil Saunders, retail analyst. He said, "quote While the flavor may seem wacky, the collaboration has a novel value, and it is likely a lot of people will be interested enough in giving it a try out." Unquote. Well, yes, they. there's a lot of products, those are known as novelties, where people just buy it once, either to say they own it, or to say they've tried it once. So, again, I, I'm not sure how much money, because just like when you create a perfume scent, it costs a lot of money to synthesize these smells, or in this case, these tastes. It's not a cheap endeavor. So they're spending real money to create nacho... A, specifically a nacho doritos flavored vodka for what reason pepsico really big they're really not in the alcohol business yet is this hinting that they're going to go into foray into that product category because then P pepsi frito-lay it's all one big it's a big uh, company dozens and dozens of brands but most of them are you know salty snack chips in the food aisle they own about 60% of any retail store at any given moment. If you walk down that salty snack chip aisle, they have about 60% of those products are Frito-Lay. And PepsiCo, it's overwhelming, you know, I guess, well, ironic, interestingly enough, the water category is growing, so they have flavored carbonated waters, but, you know, they have the traditional Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, all those types of carbonated beverages. So it'll be interesting to see, maybe they'll get into the alcohol business eventually. I mean, but still... I don't know who's going to buy this and it just seems so silly and ridiculous and I don't see how it'll make it, I don't think it will actually make them a profit. I mean, to me, that's just got to be the business blunder of the day. Thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to tune in today, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of December. So if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a comment is a great way to give me some feedback so I know how to make the show and the channel better and better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, Tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe, fight the good fight.